Okay, I'm so sorry guys. I'm sick, he's sick, the baby's sick, my mother-in-law's sick, my sister-in-law was visiting, and it's just not an interesting episode. So this is... Are they ever? Season 14, episode 3, Lonely and Flagstaff. So, Gang up on Mary time. Well, hold on, let me give it... So last week, so this is the second week, but it's the third episode because the first week was double episode. So the last episode was all about Mary and, and Vegas and all that. And also the next episode is all about the big house. So this is a transition episode, which means not a lot happened. Okay, so six weeks gone, Mary's saying, you know, it was kind of easy. You know, it's kind of sad that no one's around. It's kind of sad I don't see the kids, but it's just really easy. And if you've ever lived in a really bad environment, you know that, like, even two days away feels like, oh. How and I could really. Possibly go back. Yeah, and so it's one of those things where I really feel for her. Now, my issue with this particular episode and Mary's situation and all that is there's a couple things. Well, first off, I forgot. Oh, so this is whole discussion where they go out to lunch. Um, I saw a parody once of reality shows. I don't know if it was SNL, if it was a YouTube video, was where like one person says something and they cut to an interview of the person going, I can't believe this happened. Then it goes to the other person replying and then their interview. And it takes what would be a 40 second conversation and blows it up and that's how I kind of felt this the whole first half of the episode was is kind of non-issues like in the commercial it looked like everyone ganged up on Mary but in the actual conversation they eventually seemed to get to a point where Mary where everyone was happy now um, a lot of people on Twitter have been getting Mary a really hard time about this huge house, but her house was only $175 more a month. So what it sounds like to me is she got a great deal. I assumed it was going to be like 20 miles out of town. Looks like it's on the north end of town. I don't know enough about Flagstaff to tell if that's a cheaper area, but it kind of seems like that's barely that much more than, um, you know, versus people who bought houses. So... My issue is, it's not really her fault. It's not like people are going, yeah, it's seven times the budget. Hi, buddy. I'm sorry you're not feeling well. Uh, anyway, we were inspired today's location because we can't put the baby away. It's like pillow talk, except instead of having a nice bed, it's our mattress on the floor because the bed's broken and our sick son. So anyway, the houses still aren't all listed, which is just crazy to me. There's so much discussion about Cody's butt. It is ridiculously painful to me to watch Mary try to flirt with Cody and Cody basically blow her off. It's really uncomfortable. It's really sad. And this is where, if you are not a fan of polygamy, you really see the whole system break down. Because Cody doesn't seem to have any interest in trying to renew his relationship with Mary. He's asked Mary. Mary's still in the family. They ask her to be an active part of the family. But they don't give her the part that many people consider to be a pretty big, important part of a relationship, which is, oh, buddy, which is a marriage to a husband who cares for you or a partner who cares for you. So this is what I think. Oh, my um, goodness. I wrote cleansing. Ooh. Oh, he talked about how he, it's nice to go from house to house and get, get cleansed between the wives. And it's like he always talks about it like it's some big uh, like he, and I'm sure this is how he thinks of it. He is such a great guy to be a great husband to all these people, and no one is ever going to disagree with him. So this is what I finally came to with the wives. There is nothing, all of these wives meet and talk, they are not the problem. The wives don't need to... Okay. No, it's funny. Hey, hey, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You are so sweet. That didn't work, did it? Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, there's nothing that these wives can do to fix this. There's yeah, nothing that Mary can uh, can uh, say. Uh, you want to go with him maybe for a second? Uh, there's nothing that Mary can say to fix this. And there's nothing that Janelle, Christine... There's nothing that Janelle, Christine, and them can do to fix it. Because the problem is... Mary's deep wound is that she is married to a guy who is not spending time with her. Um, he announced to the whole world they haven't been intimate in several years. As near as I understand, he doesn't, they go out to meals occasionally. Otherwise, he doesn't go spend a day with her, none of those things. They are essentially separated. Um, 
they appear, they're like, he's like, oh, we're still working on our homework. You mean the homework from like six months ago? Oh my gosh, that is not, that is not fair. So having the wives sit around and talk, we could all bicker about, are, are Janelle and Christine doing enough? Is Robin doing enough? Is Mary doing enough? But the reality is, it's none of the, there, there is no, there's no way that Janelle can be a good enough sister wife to make up for the fact that Mary doesn't have a husband. What do you think? <laughs> Pretty much says it. I mean, so they have that whole big conversation and it was dr super dragged out. So when Mary says, when Janelle says, um, well, we'll hire someone. I turn to John and go, she doesn't want to hire someone. She wants family. But then Janelle says, that's what she did. And I go, okay, well, then Janelle's suggesting something that she personally found helpful. So that's, that's, that's reasonable. You know what I mean? Well, then Mary says, but I really want, then Mary says, I just feel really bad because no one ever wants to help me unless it's fun. Well, at the end, and then Christine's like, well, my daughter's offered to help, but I guess they're not, you know, good enough. And anyway, at the end, they agreed they'll all come over and help Mary. So it's kind of was like this, this conversation that probably took one, two minutes. They yeah. all got to the same Drug conclusion yeah. in the end. And, but what it does from an editing point is it makes us all break up. Was Mary being too selfish? Is her house too big? Is she asking for too much? Is Janelle being rude to offer that they hire someone with family money? Or is that the best thing? Or does you know, anybody care? Is, is, was Mary wrong for... But that is not the problem. The root problem of this whole situation, which very seldom gets brought up, and Christine, I think, mentions it at some point, about how difficult it is to be at family events when you and your husband aren't getting along and he's getting along with everyone else. And they've mentioned that here and there, but see, none of them want to make, they, none of them really want to say, the problem is that Cody and Mary are not living as a couple and it bums Mary out. Because that would be critical of Cody and none of them would ever do that. Um, and, and, and to be fair, they know that saying that would have everyone turn on Cody, you know, internet-wise. But that is, for me, if we're talking about, I think Janelle did the best she did, Christine did she the best she did, all of that. I think the root problem is Mary does not have a husband. She's more or less, I'd said, separated from her husband. He isn't staying with her. He isn't having any sort of relationship with her. They occasionally go on dates, which I okay. doubt are very romantic. Okay. That is the problem. And these wounds between sister wives will never ever heal until Did Mary has together? something. Well, Mary has something that the other wives have, which is a husband. Now, I wouldn't want Cody, but Mary's committed to this. And my thing is, in or out. Like, if you don't want her to be part of the family, then then tell her so. I think it'd be terrible. But she get a spinoff show, I'm sure. Or... Or let her in and she needs to get one day of Cody. She needs to get his attention. They need to be going to counseling every week. They need to be having romantic dinners. Whatever it is needs to be done. Because right now, I would be, I mean, I would be miserable. Um, so anyway, they put the walls in. Anyway, she moves back. She has a big house. Everyone's like, oh, this house is so big. Why are we doing this? Uh, when you say help, blah, blah, blah. So interrupted. Not, not basically, I'm not sure how I feel. So if you feel really strongly, Mary was so wrong, or Janelle was so wrong, or Christine, or Robin, or any of that, you can say in the comments. I just don't know. All I feel is like, I don't know why we would discuss any of those when Cody's the, the root problem. Yeah. So there you go. That, that's how I feel. Yeah. They talk about praying together. Gosh, what is, what is this? Oh, and so then the second, the, the back end of the episode was all set up for this big house. Man, does Cody ask a lot of even his friends? Now, I recognize the guy from last season. I cannot remember who he is. They describe him as Cody's friend, but I am almost positive he's a family member. He's someone's brother, maybe Christine's brother or brother-in-law or something like that. I don't remember. But um, one thing I noticed is that Mary is someone who consistently seems to have friends outside of the family. And no one else seems to ever have friends outside of the family. Maybe it's just an editing thing. Maybe they're all doing girl stuff all the time with other people. And we just don't see it because, you know, is that really the point of the show? But um, they, uh, he's talking about how what I really need is this good friend to come alongside and believe me. I was like, dude, he is not your brother husband. Like, he is not. You need to, like, back off everyone like, and this is what I was laughing about, is he shows this guy, 
uh, Nathan. He shows Nathan the house, and the guy's like, wow, that is a realistic picture. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, yeah, that's what is, my, my mother would say, damning with faint praise. Like, that is not what Cody is looking for. Um, I mean, it sounds like the house is going to have five kitchens. Now, I will tell you, multiple kitchens is a big trend. Um, compartmentalized living spaces are a big trend. When we looked for a house, because my mother-in-law lived with us, we looked for places that would accommodate a second kind of living space. She, we all shared the same main area, but she has her own little area. He's just enjoying the movie. He, um, she has her own living space. We saw probably two dozen houses that were listed at that exact moment in our price range with property for horses that had some secondary living space. Now, I don't know that you need four additional living spaces, but from a uh, secondary selling point, having second kitchenettes is not the worst idea. I don't know that they're ever going to be able to sell this house anywhere near for what they spend yeah. for it because a major huge kitchen and four secondary kitchens is really beyond anything. Anyway, this is, I'm not even going to get worked up about it. We'll see it next week because everything Cody's ever wanted, he's gotten, essentially. So I guess we're going to get one big house. And at this point, what is money? What is, what is credit? What is mortgage? What is debt? Apparently we live in a world where it just doesn't matter. So. Sure. Anyway, did you want to add, you didn't, you're not feeling well, are you? Do you have any thoughts? Everyone loves your input more than mine, so. Like, that's true. Anyway. Well, tune in next week for the Cody Show.